Okay. So it is 2.59. We are just about to um, have our first learn about um, experience. And I'm really excited because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a gal who just sort of jumps in and does things. <laughs> um, so I am offering this every Friday in February, but at different times, because I know you're like me or like any woman on the planet, you're probably pretty busy and everybody's got different things going on and you're at different stages of your life and your schedule might, you know, be great for a three o'clock meeting. It might be great for a 10 o'clock meeting, or it might be great for a 8.30, 9 p.m. kind of meeting. So, um, all right, we've got a couple of people joining me here on, on the stream. All right. So hi, ladies. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Dawn. Um, I'm going to share a brief presentation, just kind of talking about some of the aspects of being a partner with Trades of Hope and, um, you know, some of the basics and some of my experiences as a partner. And then um, I'm going to record this and then obviously I'm streaming it live. So there's going to be opportunity for, for people to watch the recording. Um, all the ladies that are joining me now are current partners, which is awesome. Um, and hopefully some of their guests will also attend. Hi, Jill. Hi, ladies. Hi, Dawn. So I am going to ask that everybody mutes themselves and I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, feel free to utilize the chat um, if you need to. And let's see. I'm going to... Share my little presentation to make sure that I stay on track. And so if you're joining us live um, and I see that everybody that's here is a current partner, so maybe your guests will, will come. Um, but if not, this is something that um, you can obviously share with them later. And um, I'm going to try to kind of hit all the highlights, all the, all the major points. Obviously, this is from my perspective um, as a partner, uh, which I'm going to share a little bit of that as well. Um, but I'm also going to going to touch on all the, all the, key important things about being a partner. So if you're in this group, this learn about being a partner with Trades of Hope group, um, I try to make it really clear, like, this is why you're here. You're here to learn about being a partner. And, and if you've been here for a little while, you see that we try to connect with, with you kind of where you are um, in your season of life and, and what, you're, what you're doing. But I know that everybody who's here, because everybody who's currently a part of Trades of Hope is part of Trades of Hope because they, they want to make the world a better place. They see injustices that they're just not okay with, and they want to do something about it. And what we do about it is create jobs for women um, all over the world so that they have freedom over their lives and choices and opportunity that, that maybe didn't exist before. Um, so I'm really, really excited for you to, to learn about being a Trades of Hope partner and um, excited to share with you this afternoon. Oh, does everybody have their coffee? I have my coffee. Um, it is definitely... Like the three o'clock coffee is definitely a real thing for me. Um, so first of all, my name is Aaron Woods. I should probably introduce myself. My name is Aaron Woods. Um, I have been a partner with Trades of Hope since March of 2013. So do the math. Uh, next month, it'll be 11 years, which I haven't done much in my life for <laughs> over a decade. Um, like I've been married over a decade and my kids are over a decade old. But other than that, like most of my, most of the things in my life have not been, you know, 11 years in the making. I, even my first career as a teacher was just at 11 years um, before I left it uh, to take care of my babies. So um, yeah, I've been a partner for a really long time. And what I've been thinking about lately is, you know, why join Trades of Hope, right? So we're talking today about being a partner with Trades of Hope and when I joined 11 years ago, um, my reason for joining was kind of different than it is today. I tried to think about, well, if, you know, as a 36 year old woman, this was my life and this was why I was attracted and drawn to Trades of Hope. As a 46 year old woman, things are, are different. Um, but so my perspective now um, is different, but I still think I would choose Trades of Hope. Um, back then, 
uh, these were my little guys. Um, this picture is my two sons, Barrett and Lawson. Yes, Lawson's head is still that big. He's grown into it a lot, um, but he was a giant, beautiful baby. Um, and my my little one was two and a half. Lawson was eight months old when I initially heard about Trades of Hope. And at that time in my life, um, these were my these, this was my world. And I had left a career that I loved. I was a teacher, a high school English and theater teacher absolutely loved being a teacher, felt like it was a calling on my life, what exactly what I was created to do. And, and when my second son was born, I felt pulled to, to stay home and to leave that career. And it was kind of agonizing and super, super hard. So when I found myself kind of a lonely, disconnected stay at home mom, loving what I was doing, you know, supporting and raising my children, but just kind of wanting something more, um, a pair of earrings came across my Facebook feed that were super cute. And I saw the line empowering women out of poverty trades of hope. And I was like, what is this? I want these earrings. I'm very intrigued by this idea of empowering women out of poverty. What does that even mean? And how does it relate to these earrings? And you know, keep in mind, this was 11 years ago. So fair trade and ethical fashion were basically like coffee <laughs> and chocolate um, and maybe some paper beads, but I wanted to know more. And what Trades of Hope became for me at that season of my life was an outlet for contribution and a way to, you know, step out of my my stay at home mom, like babies and toddler life and do something that felt a little bit more global and a little more impactful um, to kind of the greater good, which is what teaching was for me um, before I, I left my career. Um now it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, my kids are a lot bigger, you know. These are these are my boys from a couple weeks ago. Um, I'm I'm almost the smallest person in my house now. Um, they are 11 and 14, and you know they still need me. They almost need you more the older they get in in different ways, right? Like I I don't do like basic basic needs, but they need me. Um, a lot. And um, so I pour so much. And I'm so grateful that I can pour so much into my kids. Can, you know, in these past 11 years, none of that has changed. But I still have this desire to contribute to the greater good. You know, I volunteer at my kids school. I do. I work with my church, but I, I just love that I can make a global impact. So Trades of Hope continues even after all this time to be that outlet for contribution for me. So maybe that's why you're looking at Trades of Hope, maybe because it feels a little bit different, um, you know, than other direct sales companies, or, you know, if you're looking at other companies. And I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm biased, but I'm also telling you the truth. It is different. It, it's unlike any other um, thing out there in terms of, of direct sales. And it continues every single day, even after 11 years to fulfill that need for contribution. Um, so let's just talk about like the nuts and bolts for a second before we get further into um, this conversation. So how do you become a partner? Super, super simple. You grab a joint collection. We have three options right now. They're all beautiful. They're also amazing deals. Sometimes I like forget to read like the retail value of some of these. And I'm like, wow, I'm going to go buy some joint collections. Like these are really, really good. It gives you a a, a good kind of um, spectrum of, of our artisan groups. We work with 16 different uh, countries, lots of different artisan groups, and each one, you know, part of fair trade principles is really um, honoring cultural um, uh, like skills and art forms. And so every piece, you know, you look at it and you're kind of like, oh, I can tell that's from Guatemala or that's from Haiti or that's from Thailand or that's from the Philippines because of the materials that are being used and the designs. And, you know, as a partner, you get to kind of learn all these things, which is pretty cool. So you grab a collection, you're a partner, boom. Um, you get your first month of our technology suite for free. After that, it's $9.95 a month. That's the only kind of like fee that you have. Um, and that gives you your website, that gives you the ability to create party links and the ability and it also um, opens up marketing from our company to your customers without having to do anything which is wonderful it's kind of just the cost of doing business and it's a pretty reasonable you won't find many business owners out there that are like oh yeah i only pay 9.95 in business costs <laughs> for the month um so and that's also something you can turn on and off it's not a requirement that you have your website 
you can you will continue to have a back office space where you can enter orders if you're if you're finding that's something that you want to do. Um, so we have no minimums, no quotas. You're not required to have any inventory. There's no we really don't want there to be any barriers to you being successful at being a partner in whatever that looks like for you. Um, to remain active, you need one sale per year. Like, I don't think there's any, like, sometimes we talk, we laugh about like, maybe we should raise the the stakes a little bit, but we really don't want any barriers to you. Um, and that one sale a year can be something that you've sold or something that you've purchased for yourself. But one sale a year is pretty doable, especially if you are interested enough in Trades of Hope to, to become a partner. Um, you earn 20 to 25% commission, kind of depending on the product. Um, it's a little bit different for uh, coffee or um, jewelry, but that's in that range. And it's pretty instant. You get your commission within 24 hours of selling something, which is wonderful. Wonderful. We have tons of support. We have great new partner training and we have just an incredibly encouraging community um, that is like no joke. It's not it's not like a cheesy thing. Our sisterhood, the, the women that that are drawn to Trades of Hope are big hearted, beautiful, servant hearted women that just want to make the world a better place. And, and we we recognize that we're better when we do this together. And when when you know all when all what's the what's the rising tides? A rising tide lifts all boats, right? And and so there's no competition. Um, there's only support and it's really wonderful. So those are kind of the, the nuts and bolts. And if you're watching this or, you know, and somebody invited you, you know, these questions are easy to answer. Um, and what I want to give you more of this afternoon is, is also just kind of the heart and perspective of somebody who's been doing this for a really long time. So there's that. Now let's keep talking about kind of my experience as a partner in these last 11 years. So I had done a direct sales company before Trades of Hope and it did not go well. It was, it was awful. I, I was, it was felt very disingenuous. I wasn't really into the product. I was pressured to sell it. I was pressured to, and it was really, really expensive and I was pressured to recruit and it felt just icky. And it was all about like getting a car and making tons of money. Like everything that Trades of Hope is not <laughs> was my first direct selling experience. So shocker, it did not go well. And it was embarrassing and it was not fun. And I was like, like, really, it, it was it's even hard to think about now. And it's been almost like 20 years. Um, so I said, never again, I will never join another direct sales company. But like I said, I saw I saw the earrings. I, I really loved the idea. I hosted a party with Trades of Hope, just didn't want the party to end. So I. I was getting my hostess or my my joint collection for free because you can use your hostess rewards to get your joint collection. And I still was like, ah, I don't know. I told myself I would never do direct sales again. And my husband's like, what have you got to lose? Like, just give it a try. So I did. Um, and so the first surprises were, there were quite a few. First of all, um, I decided because I had, I had kind of burned relationships through my previous direct selling experience that with Trades of Hope, I was really going to honor it as a, as a real business. I was going to treat it like a business in that I was going to find real customers. I was going to, um, you know, find people that were like friends of friends and connect with people that I had never met before, um, really kind of do the work to establish a customer base versus like a friends and family base. Because if you've ever done direct sales, that did not go well. Um, you know that friends and family should not be your primary customers. Um, so my first surprises were how it was very well received by people outside of my friends and family group. I actually, the the few friends and family that I did tell about Trades of Hope were kind of like, eh, like they just saw it as like another direct sales thing and, and you know, maybe they didn't want to be uh, involved in it. So very quickly, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go find people that, that will only know me as a Trades of Hope partner and will connect with me because they love what I'm doing. And, and we're not, you know, I'm not their daughter. I'm not their best friend. I'm not their, you know, you know, whatever. Um, and that was such a wonderful, pleasant surprise, um, was connecting with those people and really starting to build a customer base. And now after 11 years, I have so many wonderful hostesses and customers and VIPs and women who have come into my life and circled around Trades of Hope just because trade of Trades of Hope, not because they're my sister or they're my, you know, my mom, or they feel obligated in any way. And it's really been wonderful. And this is going to be like, well, duh, but it, if you treat it like a business and, and, you know, enter into it with that kind of mindset, you'll be amazed how, how much easier it is, um, 
to do, to run it as a business, um, because you're not running up against those like weird, um, roadblocks of people kind of, you know, feeling obligated or, or pressured, um, which is a lot of where the, my previous direct sales business went wrong. So maybe that's you, maybe you're like, yeah, I've you know been there, done that. So treat it differently. If you love the mission. And that was the thing. I loved the mission of trades of hope. I loved just the idea. And now I know it's not an idea, it's a reality, but the reality of creating jobs for women and making the world a better place and having an impact, direct impact on real people all over the world. I wanted it, I wanted it to work. And so I honored the mission by treating it like a business and surprise, surprise, it worked. It worked so much better than um, hitting up my neighbors or people that were already in my circles. Um, so that was one of my big first surprises. Another thing that I really enjoyed was making a, a, a side income. You know, I said I joined Trades of Hope when I had quit, I had just quit my job and I wasn't totally comfortable not contributing at all to my household income, even though my husband was like, it's fine. I'm like, yeah, but I want to, I want to contribute something. Um, and so I loved that. I actually loved that. I had some control over that. I could, you know, have a couple more pop-ups. I could, you know, I, the more I sold, the more I was able to, to earn, but also the more impact I was having. So it was like this win-win, you know, it wasn't just like, selling a product that, that was, you know, just people spending money. It was selling something that was meaningful, that made a beautiful gift or, or really made somebody happy and, and honored our, again, honored our mission and, and then brought income into my house and, and gave me that kind of sense of pride that I, I had been, I didn't even know that I was missing. Um, so lots of really cool first surprises. Um, and, and and they just continue. I continue to be surprised by this business and how wonderful, um, how wonderful it was. It is. Um, so, but there were, of course, some challenges. Um, so as many people as, so first of all, I didn't think I could sell, which I think is a lot of women's story. Um, like, again, you, you're looking at Trades of Hope. You're like, I love this. I really want to do it well. What if I, what if I can't sell? Well, I'll, I won't do it at all. Well, guess what? Like not doing something at all is, is going, it has no impact on our artisans, but giving it a shot and, and giving it a try could potentially have an impact on our artisans. And you just never know. Um, the thing about selling trades of hope is it's, it's really, it's storytelling. Um, and as an English teacher and a theater teacher, I was like, well, I can tell stories. I love stories. I love the connections between, you know, humans and, and our, and our, as women and as families and as mothers and as sisters and as communities and, you know, globally, gosh, I got so into, into this and I am so into the stories and, you know, and then, and then deeper into, well, what is human trafficking and how can I play a part in preventing it? And what is job creation and what is fair trade and what does it really mean? And you just start to dig into these topics and, you know, I, I'm a teacher, but I'm a lifelong learner and I just absorbed and, and devoured so much of it. And then would love to turn around and tell others about it. Um, and, and so in selling your storytelling, your educating, your learning yourself and, and allowing others to learn along with you. Um, and then of course I got, I'm, I really enjoy style. I enjoy um, putting different looks together and incorporating trades of hope into my home. Um, there's just kind of this endless stream of like, more to learn. The coffee, I've learned so much about coffee and shared with my community as I've learned. So so yes, in all of those areas I'm selling, but because I'm excited about it, because it's a new subject that I'm learning about and I'm talking about it, it just, people are, are drawn to that and they get excited and they want to learn about it. But guess what? It's all selling. <laughs> like, and that's what's wonderful about it. It's like, oh, I've been selling all along. And, and look, you know, people are actually buying and they're very excited because I'm excited. Um, so that's kind of, you know, to, to get over that first challenge or that feeling that you might have that you can't sell. Um, there's so much more to it. Um, and, and when you're excited and you're passionate, people respond to that. Um, I already kind of shared um, that I had promised myself I was never doing direct sales again. But, but what's been interesting and, and I, again, another subject matter, I've learned so much about direct sales as a business model. And sure, there's a lot of people out there in the world that do it 
kind of kind of schmarmy and kind of weird and kind of ruin it for everybody else. But at the same time, as a business model, it's expansive and it grows. And our founders created Trades of Hope as a direct selling business because it allows. So when we started, there were about 300 partners and we were in nine different countries. Well, over the last 10 years, we've expanded into uh, 16 different countries and thousands of partners. So that wouldn't happen if we were just, uh, you know, a shop on Main Street or, or you know, even a website. Um, the the ability for women like me, women like Jill and Sarah and Don and the ladies that are on this call and all of the partners, the partners that invited you here is that we can go out and, and tell these stories and learn these things and share these things and sell these products and create this marketplace that wouldn't exist otherwise. Um, and direct sales is really powerful. It's a very empowering business model as well if you dig into the history of it. So I have a whole new perspective of direct sales. And as my husband said, what have you got to lose? And I literally had nothing to lose. I mean, whether you get your joint collection with your hostess rewards, or even if you just spend the nineteen ninety five, it's really, is it really like, <laughs> a, you know, a huge loss if it doesn't go well, it, it you'll, you'll be all right. Uh, and you'll, and you got a great deal on those products anyway, but chances are, if you love it and you get excited about it, people will respond. Now that brings me to my last challenge. Some of the people I thought would love trades of hope did ignore me. And this goes back to what I was saying before. I think a huge first lesson that I learned and have continued to, to kind of utilize in the last 11 years is that you need to release your expectations of people. Um, people will always surprise you. People will always do what you, what you don't think they're going to do. Um, so I, of course, you know, right out of the gate made this huge list of all the people that I just knew would love trades of hope. And I immediately sent them information and told them all about it. Well, they were the ones that were not interested in Trades of Hope. And I was like, oh, now that I could have stopped. I could have been like, well, if they don't like it, then nobody will. But instead, I decided to release my expectations and just continue to trust the process of sharing and, and knowing what I knew was true, which is that Trades of Hope was good. It was making a difference. And I wanted to be a part of it. So I just kept going and I kept sharing. And I started sharing with people that I thought... There's no way this person's going to be interested in Trades of Hope, but I'm going to just send them a message anyway. Well, guess what? That person was the person who booked my first party or joined as a partner or, you know, placed a huge order. So over and over and over again, and I think this is why so many women try a direct sales business and end up quitting before they even they have that first breakthrough is because you get scared because you have to trust that there's thousands of people out there that maybe you've never even met that are going to love trades of hope just because people that the first hundred people that you tell about it are not very interested doesn't mean that that that's the end um you have to release your expectations you have to keep going um and and because i did that and didn't stop in that first roadblock um i'm still here 11 years later you know hundreds and actually i've sold I just had, I just crossed my half a million dollars in uh, lifetime sales. So if I had given up, that's a lot of sales that our partners uh, across the world would have, would have not had. So there's going to be challenges, um, but there's, that's why that community and our community of support um, is so vital because we've all experienced exactly what you're experiencing. Um, and, and there's comfort in that. So what motivates me? I mean, after 11 years, it's like, really, you're still like, you're still doing this. And absolutely. I'm still doing it. And I would never consider there's, you know, there's been hard days, but like, I, I, I've never considered not doing it in the last 11 years. Um, so I'm motivated by a couple things. Um, first of all, I'm not just selling a product. I'm not just selling a, a lipstick or, or, you know, uh, any, whatever, and whatever people sell. I'm, I'm not just selling a product. I am, I am in a dignified business relationship with women all over the world and they have names and they have faces and I've met them. I've been to Guatemala three different times. I've been in Haiti. I've been at uh, our conferences where our artisans from Pakistan and uh, Kenya and Uganda and the Dominican Republic and um, India were, are literally in the room with me and I'm, I'm able to sit with them and hear from them and say to them, I'm gonna keep going and doing what I do so you can go back into, into your country and keep doing what you do. And together, 
we make a difference because I can't do it by myself. They can't do it by themselves, but it's together that we're creating and sustaining these jobs. So that's what motivates me. It's huge. I mean, I have, I have a very personal experience that has now become kind of one of the, the core artisan stories of Trades of Hope, where I went to Haiti nine years ago and met a young mom on her first day of work and found out that just a couple of days before she was walking up and down the streets of Port-au-Prince um, trying to hand her baby girl over because she couldn't afford to keep her. But because she was given a job, she was able to keep her child. And I've been able to watch over the last nine years, that little girl grow up and that mom learn to become a master potter. And that, you know, that life, that family, that story represent all the stories and traits of hope. So that's it. I'm hugely motivated by our mission. I love our products. I love our jewelry. I love our bags, our scarves, our home decor, our coffee. I love our products. They are not what motivates me. And, and I think that's kind of the, the difference with Trades of Hope. When I'm having a down day or I'm feeling, you know, like everybody's saying no, guess what? Masmin wants me to go to work today. Erica wants me to go to work today. Clara wants me to keep trying. Yah wants me to, to get over myself and, and, and put more invitations out there. Um, and on all the days of success and all the days of wins, which are more, um, I, I just, I smile because I think, okay, like we're, we can celebrate um, the fact that we're, that it's working. Um, and so I'm hugely motivated by, by the women that you see here and all of the names and faces of, of the women that we work with. Um, it, it isn't really, I mean, I, I love I love a cute pair of earrings and a, and a great, a great bag, but it really isn't that. And that I think is a huge part of what makes Trades of Hope unique. Um, and then of course my family, these are my, these are my, my guys. Um, you know, I, I, uh, my kids have never known me doing anything other than Trades of Hope. They don't really remember that I was a teacher. They were babies. Um, being a teacher was a huge part of my identity, you know, and, and my career, but for them, for my children, they know that I sell bracelets that help mothers around the world. And I think that's super, super cool. Um, they also know that I do this work and, and, but I'm also able to drop them off and pick them up from school every day. And I'm, I'm, you know, slinging spaghetti in the, in the cafeteria as a volunteer and I'm directing plays at, at their middle school and I'm, you know, singing at church and I'm doing all these things and I'm taking care of my family, um, because I don't have a regular job. Um, and, and, I love that. I love that's a huge part of my motivation. Um, you know, to to be where I am doing what I'm doing um every single day and have it be so meaningful to support the women that I work with and then of course my beautiful family. So so much motivation. Uh, that's just a little bit a, a little bit of it. Um what I never saw coming, the biggest surprise of my business uh, in the last 11 years are the absolutely incredible relationships, friendships women that I've met. I never thought I would have women that I consider my best friends um, be women that I met through a direct sales company. Um, and again, it can it can feel cheesy to say that, but some of the deepest, most beautiful relationships that I've ever had in my life um, are, are women that I've met through this company. And I never saw that coming. I had no expectation of, of friendships, community, um, any of it. But Every single day, there's women that I chat with and connect with that live all over the all over the country. Um, you know, our team is, is big and and lovely and wonderful. We're called the Great Love Nation, and we, um, you know, it's really about putting love out into the world, and and that's what we do through our work. So there's just there's so much community and connection if if you're craving that as well, and that's a huge. That's a huge thing I never saw coming. And in the last 11 years, this community has made me a, a kinder, gentler, um, better version of myself. I'm more vulnerable. I'm more open. I'm more aware of the world, but I feel more capable and equipped to do something about the, the dark things that I see. Um, you know, between, between aging in the last 10 years and trades of hope, um, I, I've become more confident, less insecure, um, just bolder. And I, it really is about surrounding yourself with, with the people that you want to be like, um, what is it? What is the quote? You become like the five people you, you surround yourself with. And, and that is absolutely true. So I try to choose amazing women with huge hearts and, and it's a lot more than five most days, um, to make sure that, that 
I'm leading with my heart. I'm assuming the best about people. I'm putting kindness and love into the world because that's what we do with every single thing that we do with our trades of hope business. All right, I think that's the end of my point, my PowerPoint. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my, my screen. Um, and if anyone, I didn't, let's see, I wasn't looking at the chat. Um, let me see. Yeah. Okay. Just some, some confirmation that, yeah, when you're, Sarah was saying, when you're passionate about something, um, people are drawn to you and the mission and then the products, right? Like that's the vehicle. So the products that we sell are the vehicle to achieve our mission. Um, and, and that's, that's just like the icing on the cake. Um, but the women who have the same kind of heart, who can't just stand by when they hear about mothers giving their babies up um, and, and women, being trafficked or, or, you know, child marriage or any of the atrocities of the world. Um, they're like, nope, something must be done. But we, we just had a beautiful conference this weekend. And one of the key points that was taken away was that we uh, fight what we hate by doing something that we love. And we love trades of hope. We love um, creating jobs for women. We love ethical fashion, but it's all to combat something that we hate, which is um, the violence and oppression and poverty and human trafficking and things that are like, you know, sometimes really hard to talk about, but we create this space where we can talk about it and we can do something about it too. And that's what I think is, is so, that's what keeps coming, keeps me coming back day after day after day for all these years. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions. I'm going to, this is a recording now um, that'll be in the learn about group. And so if you have a question, feel free, if you're watching the replay um, or you've watched this live, if you want to put a question there or tag the person that invited you, or if you're a partner and you want to tag somebody that you've invited that maybe wasn't able to, to attend this afternoon, um, It'll be there forever and ever, and we'll do it again next Friday. So, and like I said, every Friday this February, I am going to offer a little a little learn about conversation um, at different times to to support you wherever you are in your season of life and and your uh, and your day. Um, but thank you guys so much for being here for the first one. Um, I appreciate it, and all of the the faces that I see, I love so so much. We were all just together last weekend, which was so fun. It feels like it was so long ago already um but thank you guys for being here and it's nice to talk to to a room that has some people in it so <laughs> so i appreciate you guys being supportive and coming here today and i will see you guys in the learn about group bye everybody